This is a quick explanation of a technique that is explained and illustrated in this article, The Science of Scientific Writing by Gopin and Swan. Uh, the article is good in general. I think they give good advice. The one particular piece of advice that I think matters more than any of the others in this article is the concept of old to new. It is a technique that comes up about halfway through this article, and it's the sort of thing that good writers do intuitively, and they're very used to accommodating it into their writing style, and people who struggle with writing sometimes are oblivious to it. Uh, the, the technique of Oltenu is part of the criteria of the final paper that you're going to be writing, and it is one of the techniques that will make you a better writer in the future. So I want a quick video demonstrating the concept and sort of explaining what, what they're talking about. So I'm going to skip forward in the article pretty rapidly just to get to the parts that are relevant and I want to go down to page four where they bring up the stress position. The stress position means the end of the sentence. They make an argument, and I think they're right, that when a reader approaches the end of a sentence, that reader is trying to impose meaning upon that sentence. The reader is trying to, you know, mentally wrap it up. And because of this, it is a much more effective technique if you have the important information towards the end of the sentence. A reader sort of walks away from the sentence remembering that bit of information that came at the very end. They are calling that the stress position. A okay. stress position is that end of the sentence where you put the material that you want the reader to remember. Now, you take that and you combine it with this other thing they bring up a couple of pages later called the topic position. The topic position is the beginning of the sentence. And and they're the short version of the advice they give is, is characterized in this paragraph that is highlighted. I will read it quickly. I promise I'm not going to read a ton of text in this video, but quickly. Readers also expect material occupying the topic position to provide them with linkage, looking backwards, and context looking forward. The information in the topic position prepares the reader for upcoming material by connecting it backwards to the previous discussion. Then I'm going to skip forward just a little bit more. We refer to this familiar previously introduced material as old information. Conversely, material making its first appearance in the discourse is new information. When new information is important enough to receive emphasis, it functions best in the stress position. But essentially the argument they're making is that the beginning of the sentence should have material that is already familiar to the reader. It, that is the old information. Material that has been mentioned in some way or is, uh, you know, is part of the previous sentence. And then the end of the sentence should have the new material, the stuff that is worth emphasizing and the stuff that you know mentally you can expect is going to drive the conversation forward in the next sentence or the next uh, you know paragraph or whatever it happens to be. I want to quickly look at an example that we are all familiar with. This is an excerpt out of the review Trophic Downgrading of Planet Earth by Estes et al. This document or this version of it is posted on Canvas and it's been color coded in order to emphasize this technique of old to new. What you can see here is you'll get stuff that is in red and that's the first initial uh, introduction of that uh, concept. We're talking about wildfires here. And then the next sentence uh, starts by referencing something that has already been mentioned. You know, we get a sentence on wildfires, then I get a sentence that starts the frequency and extent of wildfire. And that little moment right there is essays at all obeying the the guidelines of old to new they are starting the sentence with something that has already been referenced and is familiar uh, and you can see through this color coding that they carry this out pretty much continuously through the writing uh, here they talk about interdependencies among predation herbivory and plant communities and then the next sentence starts with such interdependencies are will illustrate in east africa where the introduction of render pests in the late 1800s uh, decimated many native ungulate populations including wilderness beasts and buffalo. Next sentence starts, reductions in these large herbivores. And there's a reference to the thing that previously came up. Here, the next sentence starts, render pest was eliminated from East Africa. And uh, then I get the next sentence, which is a continuation of that idea. Because of this, wilderbeest and buffalo had recovered what was thought to be historically high levels by the uh, 1980s. The resulting increase in herbivory drove these systems from shrublands to grasslands, and on it goes. What I'm trying to get at by looking at this, this paragraph is how their sentences are constantly starting with familiar information. They are not hitting the reader with brand new ideas. They're starting with something that has already been mentioned. 
Now, it is worth noting that this is directly contrary to our impulses as writers. When we are trying to write something mentally, our goal is often to get to the next idea as quickly as possible. We're trying to get it on the page and express it, and we're sort of thinking ahead. The reader is not working with that same mental framework. The reader is just trying to interpret, and sometimes the impulses we have as writers can disrupt the, the, the writing that we produce for a reader. It, it can make it like sort of disorienting, and suddenly we're hitting the reader with a new idea and a new idea and a new idea. This is what the concept of old to new is meant to avoid. It is meant to help uh, gradually ingratiate the reader into the ideas. A metaphor that I ask my students to think about with this is a conversation. One person brings up one topic, and then naturally, organically, that kind of leads to a different topic. You might have somebody who starts talking about a car that they're interested in buying, and then you will have that shift to a conversation about gas mileage of that car, which will shift to a conversation about air pollution, which might gradually shift to a conversation about traffic. And then you, somebody might bring up, you know, various different cities that have bad traffic, and eventually you're talking about about, you know, a, say Seattle or whatever, some city that is uh, totally different from what you've started talking about, which was a car that you're interested in buying. The conversation will shift organically and there's no forced shifts in it. It's not like anybody announces, hey, I would like to talk about traffic in Seattle. Instead, there's just this organic sort of evolution of, of the focus. And to some degree, your writing should function with a similar sort of technique. One idea gradually leads to the next idea and that is carried off through this old to new uh, technique that they're talking about. Look for this in your paper. Don't overthink it as you're writing, but you should sort of be aware of this as you are uh, editing the paper. You should be thinking, am I gradually introducing the, the information? Am I starting the sentences with information that has already been uh, stated or that is familiar? Um, anyway, that's Gopin and Swan. That's the old new technique. Uh, try to apply it to the writing that you do. It will serve you well in the future.